Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at binomial expansion of partial fractions, so we can answer questions from exercise 4c. So let's see how we do this then. So basically it's a two-step process of uh, topics that we've seen before. We're going to split a fraction into partial fractions and then with those two fractions or three fractions potentially uh, we're, going to, we're going to write out the binomial expansion of those and then combine them together to form one binomial expansion of the whole thing. So let's go through a question and find the, exp find the expansion of 4 minus 5x over 1 plus x 2 minus x up to and including the x cubed term. So first thing to do, we need to express this as partial fractions, if you've forgotten. It's basically split up the bottom and have it as one fraction over another fraction. And then we need to um, calculate what a and b are. <clears throat> so if we try and put these uh, right-hand fractions together, we get a brackets 2 minus x plus b brackets 1 plus x on the numerator. And now the fractions are equal, so we can set the... Um, numerators equal to each other. <clears throat> so in this case here it's going to be 4 minus 5x equals a 2 minus x b 1 plus x and now we insert strategic values of x so that we can work out what a and b are. So in this case if we try x equals 2 then that will make the a bracket equal 0 so therefore if we substitute in 2 all the way down the line we're going to get b equals 3b equals minus 6, so b is minus 2. And think about what strategic value we need for this x bracket, for this b bracket here. Uh, if x is minus 1, this will make this bracket 0. So if we substitute in x equals minus 1 the whole way along, then we're going to get 3a equals 9, so a equals 3. So in this case here, the partial fraction for 4 minus 5x over uh, 1 plus x, 2 minus x is 3 over 1 plus x, substituting a back in up here, minus 2 over um, 2 minus 2x. So if b is a negative, just bring it to the front and replace it with the positive that you've got there. Now that we've got this, we can now um, write out the binomial expansions for both of these and then do the second one subtracted from the first one. So let's have a go at uh, the first one then. So expand this one separately then. So it's going to be written as 3 brackets 1 plus x to the minus 1. And we can find this using the binomial expansion. That one's a relatively straightforward one. So once we've found that, we then need to multiply all of these terms by 3 because there is a 3 on the top of the fraction or a 3 at the front of the bracket. So it's going to be 3 minus 3x plus 3x squared minus 3x cubed. And for the second one now, so we'll just park that over there. Um, let's now do 2 minus x to the power of minus 1. Now, this is a little bit more of a tricky one because we've got to take the 2 out of the brackets. So taking the 2 out of the brackets with the minus 1 power as well, that will turn it into a half. So now it's just 1 minus x over 2 to the power of minus 1. Just notice here how, and remind yourself that if you're taking a 2 out, you also need to divide the x term by 2 as well. So let's have a go at this now. So substituting this into the binomial expansion, x is going to be represented with a minus x over 2, and n is minus 1. So substituting those into the formula and simplifying... 1 plus x over 2 plus x squared over 4 plus x cubed over 3. And in this case here, we don't need to bring the 2 back in because we simplified the 2 and the half when we were dealing with the whole fraction. So we don't need to bring anything back in. <clears throat> so now we've got these two bits here that can now be simplified. We need to do the top one, subtract the bottom one. So in this case here, we can simplify this. 2 minus 1 is... 2, and remember that you've got to subtract all of these terms, so minus 3x minus x over 2, 3x squared minus x squared over 4, and minus 3x cubed minus x cubed over 8. Right, your turn to have a go at this question here now. Pause the video and try this one out. Okay, now these questions are generally 
<clears throat> generally quite long, so I'm just going to take, um, try and squeeze in my writing, and hopefully it will still make sense to you. So the first thing we need to do is split these up using partial fractions. So a over 1 plus 2x plus b over 1 minus 3x. And in this case here, we can therefore get to 12x minus 1 equals a 1 minus 3x plus b 1 plus 2x. So let's start substituting values in now. Let's start substituting in x equals uh, a third. So a third of 12 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. That will cancel out this bracket here. And then we need to do 2 thirds plus 1. So 2 over 3 plus 1 will give you 5 thirds. That's equals to 5 thirds b. So in this case here, b is going to be 9 over 5. This is probably going to turn into a very messy equation here. Next one, x equals minus a half for the fraction that's above the a. So a half, minus a half of 12, that would be minus 6. Minus another 1, you get minus 7. And substituting it in here, 3 times a half. And then the double negatives will cancel out. So we'll then plus 1, and we get 5 over 2a. So in this case here, a is going to be minus 14 over 5. So our question here, g of x, can be written as um, minus 14 over 5, 1 plus 2x. Add uh, 9 over 5, 1 minus 3x. Right, so part A done now then. Now we've got to work on the binomial expansion of both of these. Uh, let's just do it in this little space down here. We can set this as minus 14 over 5, uh, 1 plus 2x to the minus 1, plus 9 over 5, 1 minus 3x to the power of minus 1. Now, I'm quite glad that they're both 1s in these brackets here. That means I doesn't have, don't have to take anything out. But I am going to have to now do the binomial expansion of both of them. So let's first do minus 14 over 5, um, 1 plus 2x to the power of minus 1. So substituting them in, I'll uh, just leave the minus 14 over 5 at the front for now. I won't include that yet. And we're going to be substituting in 2x for x and minus 1 for n. So it's going to be 1 minus or plus, let's just do it all in one go first, um, 2x times n, which is minus 1, plus minus 1 and reduce it by 1 minus 2, all over uh, 2 factorial times by x squared. That will be 2x squared, actually. And we're only looking to go up to the x squared term, so that we'll leave it there. So expanding these brackets, we're going to get minus 14 over 5. Um, it will be a double negative in this case here, so it will be plus 28 over 5x. <clears throat> the next one here is going to be a double negative inside the brackets. Uh, 2 will cancel out top and bottom here. We'll get 4x squared, but it will be a negative um, once we expand with the front, so it would be minus 56 over 5x squared. Okay, we've done this one now. Now on to the next one. 5 over 9, 1 minus 3x to the power of minus 1. So we'll leave the 9 over 5 at the front. And in this case here, it's going to be 1 plus minus 3x um, times by minus 1. And the next term is going to be minus 1 times minus 2 all over 2 factorial times by minus 3x all being squared. Okay, so expanding the brackets here we get 9 over 5 <coughs> minus, no, plus for the double negative, um, 27 over 5x. Um, Okay, how many negatives have we got here? One, two, three, four, so still positive. <coughs> and this will cancel down to nine inside the bracket, so 81 when we expand it. X squared. 
Now all that's left for us to do now is to just add these two terms together. Notice how we already had the minus 14 over 5 included in the questions. We don't need to subtract this one, it's just going to be adding this and this together. So in this case here we can do minus 14 um, over 5 add 9 over 5, that would be minus 5 over 5, so that's minus 1. Uh, the next term here is going to be 27 add 28, which gives us 55, 55 over 5 is 11. So it's going to be 11x, and in the last case here it's going to be 81 minus 56 all over 5, that's 25 over 5, so that's going to be plus 5x squared. There we are, good stuff, that's the answer to this question here. So it does take a long time, and but it is a common exam question because it, obviously you can see that it does combine two questions, uh, two topics, into one here. Right, thanks very much for watching. Have a go at plenty of these questions from exercise 4C. And we've finished the chapter now, so why not also have a go at some of the mixed exercise questions before you move on to the next topic. Thanks very much for watching.